if you guys didn't see this, both these women are a problem. <laughs> I was like, both of them are. But um, I've been a fan of Drew's for a long time, but holy crap. <laughs> holy, holy. Martha gets creepy with the guys on her show. Did you guys ever watch that? I actually pulled an episode up on my Insta like a long time ago. I was sitting there watching the, you know, the TV that I hadn't watched in about a million years. And I was like, what the hell? This guy came on there and she's like, so, I don't know. It was all weird. And I was like, I bet you she like tries to like get up with them at the end of the show. It was so crazy. So Martha's kind of guilty of being a little, I don't know. I would have to pull up that episode. Was it like a gardener guy? Yeah, like she'll have these these younger guys that are like, I don't know, I'd say they're semi-decent looking. And she's just like, I'm really glad to have you on here. Yeah, she'll start doing this. So she ain't, she ain't, yeah. Because if it was, if it was the gardener guy, the gardener dude, and he was doing this, Martha would be like, oh, you know what? Should we end the show right now and y'all come over? Yeah, it'll be this thing. But uh, somebody pointed this out, and I'd say it's probably the spot on explanation for this. Um, her lack of boundaries, it's all about control. It's not empathy. It's controlling. And her guests don't like it. If she were a man, this would never fly. If she were a man, Martha would be way down with it. Trust that. And they claim he... Oh, okay. Did that to them. Okay, yeah, seriously. Okay, um... Yeah, I actually had this issue... I had this happen when I was a kid trying to hide from the Ola ring. And this woman come up to me, which is the one that brought the kidnapper, the dude that took me to North Hollywood. Okay. So she kind of presented herself as like help. And she's like, us women got to stick together. And she sat down next to me on this, uh, step, the steps on this corner thing, and then put her arms on me and started just like doing a Drew Barrymore. And I was like, uh, no. And I don't even let my parents do that. But somebody was even bringing up in here, I hope she doesn't do that with their kids. And I was thinking about this and I was like, oh yeah, the P. Diddy mom, where she's like all over her son. And then it's basically like incestuous. And then, but let's say we look at it, because I'm just looking at it from afar. She would, okay, so we know her background. And we know it was really bad. And then you can get some information from that. And then her repeating of doing that to her kids and maybe her kids. I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't, I, I don't, I don't even want to go there right this minute. Cause I don't know if her kids are going to be a problem or anything like that. Or if she's doing that to her kids, she probably is. I don't know. But when you see the outcome of these families doing this stuff where they're like, it's not sexual. And then it totally is right. Because they're crossing boundaries. And then the kids don't learn boundaries. And then they do these things to other people. And then I get these men all over me. And they're like, what? What's the problem? Why are you complaining that I'm all over you? And then I can go complain to Drew Barrymore that some guy keeps putting his hands all over me. Just like an Adam Sandler, which he didn't have issues with. And then doesn't do anything. And then sits there and makes the rest of us suffer and either, you know, saying there's something wrong with us because we have an issue with it or, you know, all this other thing, right? So this topic was totally brought up. It was, so, <laughs> I, I, I keep going back to it because it's so crazy. The, the topic, the topic was because when I went to my job, these men kept doing that. And that was like, I'm like, that's your boundaries. You better not go any further than that. And, um, to try to keep them away from me. And... It's not like I wanted that. It's just that um, you couldn't stop this this conduct. So somebody brought this up, actually, with the Adam thing. And I actually didn't even know he was that bad. I didn't know he was, like, sending out things to people. Like, e -he, you, know. Um, you know, because, you know, the mindset is just like, I don't care. I think I'm funny. But I don't really think about other people. And I think we've all been there doing something like that before. But it's like, okay, you get called out. Let's just say you're just obliviously being a dickwad and not caring about, you know, oh, my actions actually might upset other people. Because um, sometimes you do know and you don't care. And sometimes you shouldn't care. 
But in these cases, you should care because it has something to do with touching people. And, um, and so then everybody's like, oh, they're going too far, getting upset with this. And then, so then they just let Adam Sandler slide. And then now Drew's doing it. But as you see, she wouldn't have a problem with this. So she's not even going to complain about these men doing that to her. Do you guys see it? And so you could ask him, go, did you have any issues with anybody, um, you know, sexual misconduct or any touchy touchy, any of this stuff? And they're like, no, absolutely not. Oh, that's because she does that, right? Martha is like old america evil grandma <laughs> like that's that's where she says i actually just saw another clip with her with drew again and they were saying that she was totally ignoring her and and then ellen it was i don't know it was weird like ellen actually seemed like the nice one on the ship but she was like off to a corner just actually kind of away from both of them at a point and it was just strange. It was just strange. Like, the dynamic was just strange. I, I don't know. Like, she just, uh, she reminded me of when of Wendy, Wendy from that one van, uh, when I was standing there and she totally disregarded, just d ignored. That shouldn't actually be going on either. That's just rude as hell. Um, so no, she's not like the perfect one in the case either. I, I'm just trying to think of like how I would respond. I think a lot of times when that's has ha when that has happened, I haven't responded at all. I think it's just more of I'm suffering. I'm do not want them on me. And in my mind, I'm trying to think of like how not to be rude. You know, this, I think I actually respond more that way than, um, doing what they did here. Um, uh, Today, today, I probably would say something like, Drew, Drew, you need it, you need, because they already um, confronted this problem. So I'd probably say, Drew, you need to get back, get back, get back, honey. <laughs> you know, but um, no, but people are going deep in the comment section. I actually, these comments are not really terrible. I mean, they're, they're actually, um, I think they're being fairly kind to Drew. I mean, they're saying she has problems, but they're being kind, like we know her background. Drew needs to be talked to off camera. Some of her instincts are wrong and she needs to check herself. Good good that Martha was bold enough. Well, Martha doesn't have any issues with that. Can you literally go through Martha's TV show? It's so weird with her and the young gardeners. <laughs> I was like, no. No, it's on the line of if you want to call me after this show. Drew Barrymore is an emotional problem child. There is really something wrong with Drew. All the earlier drugs and alcohol has finally caught up. Creeper. Drew Barrymore has never learned that there are barriers you don't cross. You would think, though, you know, from all that stuff, that it would be like, at this point, she would be really on top of that. I mean, she was all weird about how her daughter's dressed or something. And I was like, well, how she dresses, I don't know why is that an issue. You, but you touching people is fine. All right, what? Why do people even go on the Drew show? Drew is cringe. She really is. The way she treats her guests, getting on her knees for them. She makes me feel embarrassed just looking at her. I see. I had a guy. The reason why this is it's it's interesting seeing a female do it. But I had this guy do that to me, a stranger, a complete stranger, in the middle of a bank, and then he stalked me out to my car and like the security hello. Oh, he made a big old scene. He got down on the floor and everything. Uh, probably uh, even worse than Drew, but about that level. Yeah, how would you like if somebody you didn't even know? Drew is sweet, but has no boundaries. And sometimes that's important to learn, especially in her role. Her role... Wait, especially in her role is others' sense of boundaries. You can see Martha's not the touchy type. She's more removed than most. Um, who is into being touched all the time by just random people? I would like to know. Drew is trying too hard. Very annoying. One could imagine Martha Stewart being soft and gooey and fishy. <laughs> yeah, dude. That was such a weird comment on grossed out. I usually skip over stories related to Drew Barrymore, but I, I looked at her and my God, she looks scary crazy. The interview brings back memories of my younger days when I was clubbing. 
usually the people who tried to engage in this way was on something like something stronger than alcohol. Drew has always had a drug problem, probably back on the molly again. Won't be surprised if she doesn't start sucking on a pacifier next. What the hell? Oh, I remember people wearing those around there. What was that about? I used to be overly affectionate with people I didn't know too well. I thought I was just being friendly and warm. In retrospect, I was trying to create false intimacy in an effort to feel more secure in an unsteady relationship, and in doing so, I disrespected a lot of people's personal boundaries. These days, I'm good with the head nod, smile, or fist bump. Okay, so, but if you get any allegations, you can't say that everybody's a liar, okay? <laughs> wow, kudos for you for being introspective and self-aware. You seem mentally healthy. Well, I wouldn't go to that extent, but, <laughs> but you may have come across as more friendly and warm, less negative than you have judged yourself. In Drew's case, I hope she's not like, I don't know how you're even going on like this, London. Wait. You don't know anything about that person just from that little read. Like, I don't. Like, they're saying, I used to just molest everybody, and now I don't do... I mean, I'm really fine. I'm fine with just nodding at people. Probably because they got busted. <laughs> okay, wait. You might have come across as more friendly and warm, less negative than you, you have judged yourself. Now they're minimizing their problem. In Drew's case, I hope she's not like this with her kids. Okay. The client weight of parents' neediness can have a negative impact. Seems like her interpersonal relationships need to be on her terms and comfort, comfort level more than other people, other person. Um, she had a disregard for other perpetrators. Um, so I knew that was a problem. Like when you see women do that, when they just disregard that somebody says that someone's a problem person and they do that. And I said, I go, oh, we're finding out, like, that's because um, not only do they, like, normalize that, they also probably do it. Is this not a probably do it? It's a probably. It's an actual do it. <laughs> uh, gay men have been doing this, too, as well. Like, uh, other men had problems with this, and then they used to just sit there and degrade other people going, um, you're just homophobic. It's like, first of all, everybody should respect everybody's boundaries, regardless if we're gay, straight, anything, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Women on women, man on man, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, nobody should be going on like that. I, I didn't, I didn't even like, I didn't even like all that huggy, huggy thing when I was a kid. And then I kept hearing Christians saying people need to be more physically connected i was like getting grossed out with it they need to be more physically connected and they need to be touched like something like that um if i could find the old comments of those types of things you're gonna see how uh frightening a lot of these old timers are and what they promoted on children and now we have a lot of issues where they haven't even come out they haven't even really come out yet with all the family inner dynamics of sexual misconduct and this would actually fall in line there, regardless if she thinks it's sexual or not. So, Drew is nearly 50, yet still acts like a clueless youngster. I didn't even do that when I was a kid so much. I mean, we did some conduct, like I was talking about the frat housing type of thing. But um, I didn't really run around rubbing on my friends or anything. I had friends do that to me. I had friends that sat there and... Um, would draw on my back when I was a kid because her mom did. I hope they're not just randomly doing that stuff to people now today. But, uh, yeah, there was, I mean, a few things, but, um, <laughs> I was like, there was a few things that my friends did, but sometimes, uh, I don't know. Not, I, I just didn't, I wasn't that, that person there. Drew grew up with no one modeling what a proper relationship look like her entire youth was marred by a complete lack of boundaries with everyone around her absolutely that was crazy she's doing what she knows you're right though that she needs to learn she could benefit from seeing a therapist i think it's almost like well because she knows she's like mentally aware and it's almost like i don't know i, I don't know if i want to put it under like obsessive compulsive where it's like, I can't stop. And then 
but it's also what somebody else said, the control factor. And so, hmm, I don't have this problem, so I can't even, I was trying to pull, like, I can't pull from it. Because I know that if somebody told me that, I'd be, oh my god, I'm not a perpetrator. I'm not going to do this ever again. Yeah, it would just be this thing, but she doesn't, and it's not even just the touching, is what she was saying, it was all weird. It can be seen as a sexual advance. Oh, it doesn't even matter. It is It is basically a sexual conduct. <laughs> you don't think it's a sexual conduct? Watch, let me find the video. It was on TMZ. Makes you soft and gooey, though. What makes me soft and gooey? Soft and gooey. Yeah, what? Treatment. Soft and gooey treatment. Yes. When you're treated like a lady. Nice, it's nice. Someone, <laughs> someone comes in and... You're the wrong gender. I know. <laughs> Maybe it's like 50 first dates. She forgot. She forgot today that they told her yesterday. <laughs> that, um, what you're doing is bad. You know how many si times I've seen 50 first dates? More than 50 times. Okay. Soft and gooey. Soft and gooey. Because Drew has a thing about her where it's kind of like she, she lowers your anxiety level um, from far away. <laughs> from far away. But in person, I think that's the opposite. I think she would cause me an, a panic attack. But she does. She has kind of a persona where it's kind of like you could be in the worst situation and then throw Drew up in here. And then all of a sudden, it's not so bad. Persona in movies. That's the even when she's talking with Martha on this other video, um, she's very kid like. And I don't know. That's probably part of it. But then at the same time, when you come to this right here, <laughs> I was like, I'm not in the position. I'm not sitting next to her. You know what else I have with her is these these photos from the photo album that I, I got. And she's doing the same thing to the security guard guy. It is crazy. I go, the guy's not an ugly guy, but he might be he might be gay. I'm not really sure. Um, I was like, there was some like indication that maybe i was like maybe but then i'm not sure because then he has a lot of female stuff in here and he's kissing people too okay so the guy the guy this was really interesting when i was looking at the photo album i was like i want to post maybe i should throw in the few pictures with her like the pictures are cute okay the pictures are cute they're cute and he's a big fan of hers i guess too because they have a couple pictures of her throughout a couple times and at one event uh, there was a couple pictures. I think one was, uh, was one a Polaroid? It was kind of weird. Anyway, they're sitting down together and Drew is all over him. Like her arms wrapped around him where it looks like if you didn't know any better, like that's her boyfriend. I go, I wouldn't be surprised if they dated, but I don't think that's what's happening here. I think it's her doing what she's doing, you know, here. And the guy's totally fine with it. You guys. He's, he takes another picture from the side and they look like a pair. They look like a pair and she's just, you know, this thing. And I'm like, Drew, and he's totally fine with it. He's absolutely fine with it. You guys, of course he likes the attention. And then later in other pictures, he's being, he, he's kissing this. Uh, okay. So he's also a fan of women of color, which is really interesting in this. So I was like, I can't tell what this thing is about. Because it's like, you see that he didn't have his mouth on any of these white women so much. But he is totally up on this black woman. And he really loved Whoopi Goldberg. And then I didn't see him touching Whoopi Goldberg. But he's got quite a bit of young Whoopi. And then he um, has his arm. He's all over downtown julie brown and i had to go look her up again because i was like this woman like she's not on tv so much anymore today but she used to be really popular back when i was a kid and then up in my early yeah up until i don't know whenever the early 90s and i noticed that she was also at a nygaard party and i'm like what's going on there but then she's married to some guy so she's married to some guy so i was like i don't know if this is right before that or 
what? But no, no, he's like all over, like hugging, like they're like the best of friends. And I'm like, what is this about? You know, I'm trying to figure it out, you know, as I'm looking through pictures. But anyway, yes, yes. So I have pictures of Drew doing this too. All the way back, the year of these was, okay, it was 1995 for one of them, I think. And then the other event, I have no idea. It could be uh, anywhere between 1990 and 95. It was a... I think it was the hero event again or something. It was some some other event. It wasn't a, it wasn't a movie premiere or anything. It was a maybe a charity event or something something. I don't know. I could post it, but the pictures are good of her. Um but yeah, you were doing that. <laughs> like you were doing that. Or if you dated him, let me know. We're trying to figure out who the guy is so I can you know if he wants his book back. Um but if not, um um <laughs> I was just like, I've been like, like, do I want to post more of this stuff? I posted a few, you know, and I was just kind of like, is anybody going to contact me? Does anybody want it back? Does any, anything, anybody know them? No, I haven't got any bites on that. I swear to God, like I was just sitting here and I had the TV on because I don't even, I won't even really watch it half the time. And I'm just doing work or doing some weird thing. And it was like on. And I go, I could deal with listening to Martha, I guess. And it's just annoying. Because it's just like these hoity-toity. Like, it reminds me of my 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 Eva grandma. Okay, so, you know, I was like, oh, you know, you know, this thing. And I'm like, okay, okay. But sometimes there's like good advice on there. So I'll listen to it. And it's just like these rich women. They're like, you know, me and my hud Frederick, my hubby Frederick, you know. Um, I had all this money to do this huge vineyard. And this vineyard, I did this, it took me a long time to do this fucking vineyard. And it's just like, oh God, <laughs> rich people, rich white women problems, the money from their husbands. And so anyway, they're, they're going on. But I like gardening, so once in a while, once in a while, there's some good luck doing something. But, um, no, but the guys will come on, and I swear to God, it's, so how do you do this you like cut it in half you know? like she's totally <laughs> martha be acting like that with men she just said it though you're the wrong gender put a guy with martha that's a decent looking gardener guy and watch how she acts so does that make her a good person in this either no <laughs> i was like nobody pulls it out or her with her flirtation with the gardener Drew's not the only one. I don't want her feeling like we're just picking on her, but they're actually good examples. But, oh, my God, this one's actually worse. And this is Rick Ross, and she doesn't have an issue with it, you guys. Oh, my God. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Baby got back. She's totally into it, you guys. She's fake. She's fake. She has a problem only because it was a woman doing it. Rick Ross is disgusting going on like that. Okay, that's that's way inappropriate. I I cannot believe that. I didn't see this. You know when this was posted? Tw 2016. She be fake. She's a hypocrite. She only lets men do it. And it's all inappropriate. And so she's another problem. So to sit there and try to paint Martha as the good person in the story is unreal. So what would happen here is if I go... To Martha. Uh, Martha, uh, Rick Ross keeps being inappropriate with me. And he, like, put his arms on me and everything. And she wouldn't have a damn problem with it, you guys. None. And she would cover up the crime. And she would be shitty to me and all kinds of things. So, I don't want to be hella crappy to Drew. But I uh, critiquing her when she's doing something wrong. But she sure as hell wasn't Rick Ross. She wasn't asking to have a sex act with her. Okay? But it's still all bad, okay? It's still all bad across the board. But that was the addition. I was actually trying to find something else, but that came up. And I go, you guys, if you look at her old show, she was being, I don't know, little flirtations with the guys on there. Maybe not as blatant as this thing right here with him doing it to her. But definitely, there's no good person in the story, okay? Going on like that. Rick Ross is actually hands down the worst in this thing. If you guys recall, I covered Rick Ross like a long time. Oh, my God. Where's Ice Cream Man, too? Isn't that Gucci? Gucci, man? that dude? 
Oh, oh God. I don't, well, I don't even remember half the stuff that he did. It was just more like ridiculousness over there, but no, Rick Ross. Okay. So Rick Ross actually has a big McMansion. Okay. And there was a story that came out with this girl on the, on the property. And for whatever reason, I was thinking about this story and it may be as it seems as it came off, but I was even thinking about it even further because of the Diddy story that actually came forward. Um, but this is before the Diddy story came forward. I was looking at it and going, God, they could literally tell the police any freaking thing about that girl, anything and lie and get her dragged off the property. And she just sounds like this crazy person. Now, maybe she was, I can't, I can't, I don't know, but she was on the property and she's like, I know him. I'm with him. I was there and blah, blah. And this, all these things happen. And um what did she say that about a baby i was like you know what i wouldn't even if that was even true right like whatever whatever the crazy story was at the time i was like if that was even true we wouldn't even know like how could i even debate that i was just thinking about it i was like he could sit there and go okay he had this girl they did something terrible to her she was supposed to be there and he's like i don't want her here anymore i got some other girl here get her off the property get her off the property and then the cops come, they don't even think twice about it, and they get her off the property. And that was the story. So I was just looking at it, and I was like, should we start to question some of these stories? Because I know that happens with some crazy fans. I do. That totally happens some sometimes. Sometime. It's a sometime. But there's other times where they abuse their position of power, and they have people come over and then they just want them to be gone. Like whatever, whatever garbage is going on here. And I was like, yeah, it could be a whole different thing going on. And we just like went with it. So I'm starting to posit these stories a lot more than maybe in the past where you just hear and go, oh yeah, some crazy fat. I was like, no, maybe, maybe there was a little more to that. Why is she there? You know? And I don't know. They said she's wandering around the pool. That it could just be that you guys, because I even know somebody else that was a little bit on that level. Uh, I was talking about that Leonardo thing. Um, but um, it also could be something else. But then you see Rick Ross, right? And how he's being here. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. You guys got to start questioning these stories. Because they could literally paint it out any which way. And for whatever reasons, the cops just take the word for these guys. And I keep saying they're the pile of, you know what, abusers in the story is the cops. I was like... Why are you coming over here? This happened over here too. I go, some guy calls you and tells you a story and you run with it without any backing to the story. It's, it's, this has been going on for a long time, long time. And I don't know. I can't answer it. I don't know if he's another person that, you know, eventually is going to get because look at his actions. When you see his actions here, this is a type of person that has no boundaries, none whatsoever. And You're raising they're all down with this. My temperature. <laughs>